Now, hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today I've got a really special video for you on the eve of Valentine's Day. So tomorrow's Valentine's Day and we all wanna show that special someone in our lives uh, how much we love them. And while you can go out and spend a lot of money and buy chocolates, uh, maybe gifts or balloons, now today we're gonna show you how to do it using mathematics. So I'll show you three different ways to really express your love for someone using math. All right, let me show you how to do things. The first technique is really, really simple. All you need to do is to remember the number 128. Easy to remember. And square root of E, let me get back to that one in a second, multiplied by the number 980. Now, E is just this mathematical constant. You might remember it from school when you were growing up. Uh, it's an irrational number, uh, which is 2.7, uh, 1, 8, 2, 8. Uh, a whole bunch of other digits, but we don't need to go that far. All right, so let me show you how to turn this 128 square root of E multiplied by 980 into that very special message for the person that you love. All right, so all you have to do is pretty straightforward. Took a piece of just white paper and folded it to make it look like a card, okay? Now, once you have it kind of looking like this, uh, the next step is just to rewrite our number over the seam. So this is what it looks like. This is what the completed project looks like, right? That's pretty straightforward, rather inexpensive as well. And then all you have to do is to reveal the secret message, uh, you just flip the top. Look what happens when you flip the top. You are left with a very nice message, and your loved one will be quite surprised to see that. All right, so there's the first method. I'll show you the second one now. All right, the second method involves solving an algebraic problem. Uh, this is at the grade seven level, so hopefully your loved one is able to solve it. Uh, it's not unique by any stretch, but here's one in particular that you can ask them to solve to reveal the secret message. All right, the problem is simple is 9x uh, minus 7i is greater than uh, 3 uh, parentheses 3x minus 7u. All right, now they have to perform the algebraic steps in order to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and work our way through it. Uh, we can keep this first term. Let's do a couple steps over here, keep this the same way. And now we'll distribute the three, so we get nine X and minus 21 U. All right, one thing we notice is we have nine X's on both sides of the equation. So if we subtract nine X from both sides, uh, that's simply going to leave. And now we're left with a negative seven I is greater than negative 21u. All right, what we wanna do now is we wanna isolate i and have it by itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide through by negative seven on both sides. Now, when I do negative seven on both sides, if you remember one of the rules that you have to do is you gotta switch the sign, right? You gotta go from greater than to less than in order for it to be correct at the end. All right, and the last step, now we just clean it up uh, and get rid of the negative sevens. Uh, here we're gonna get rid of, uh, divide through by negative seven, so we're left with a three on this side. And then all we have to do is simply rewrite our final answer. So we're gonna have I right here. Our sign becomes less than. And then we have three U. And there you have it, folks. If you read that carefully, uh, she'll be quite impressed with the solution. Maybe she won't see it right away, depending on how she's written it out, but uh, I still kind of enjoy that one. All right, and the last way that you can show that special someone that you love them is to show them this message right here, which is I, uh, this formula here, x squared minus absolute value of x times y, plus y squared is less than one, and u. All right, let's go see why this message is so special, and why you should share with that special someone tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a simple uh, geometrical shape, which is just a uh, circle. Uh, the equation for this circle, which has a radius equal to one, is simply x squared plus y squared equals to one, and that's it. Now, what if I wanted to kind of stretch out the circle a little bit and make it into, a lip, into an ellipse? Uh, one thing you could do is you could introduce a coefficient or a number in the front of the x squared term. So the next one I have is I've multiplied the x squared term by one half. And look at what happens. I've taken that circle and I've kind of stretched it out a little bit. All right, now one thing I wanna do now is I wanna rotate ellipses. Uh, one way you can rotate an ellipse by 45 degree angle is to introduce a middle term here, which I'm calling x multiplied by y. Now there's two ways I can do that. I could either add x multiplied by y or I can take away x multiplied by y. Let's go see what happens in each case. So if I add x times y to the middle term, 
Uh, this is what I get. I get an ellipse that's been rotated by 45 degrees in the clockwise direction. Uh, if I take away, if I subtract x times y to my circle equation, uh, look what happens. I get an ellipse again, except now it's rotated counterclockwise by 45 degrees. Um, one, way I, one thing I want to do now is I want to make, I don't want an ellipse. What I want to do is I want the shape to be symmetric about the y-axis. And one way I can make a shape or a function symmetric about the y-axis is to put an absolute value for the x values. So let's show you what that one looks like. If I just stick absolute value to the x term, again, I keep it negative. I put a absolute value. Look what happens. Let's get rid of those ellipses now. Ah, look what we have here. We have a heart, and this heart is very, very special. Uh, it's a function where it crosses the y-axis at plus or minus one, and it also crosses the x-axis at plus or minus one. It's kind of unique. Now you might ask, well, what happens if instead if I had a positive term over there? Now that you don't want to do, right? That's going to flip your heart upside down. So uh, let's keep things positive and keep our heart kind of the way it should be. All right, what happens now if I play with some of these coefficients? Well, I may want a bigger heart. So instead of the heart being equal to one, uh, what if it's equal to two? Uh, two will make it a little bit bigger. That's kind of cool. Uh, the other thing you might want to do now is, let's go back to size one. Uh, you may want to just alter the shape a little bit. I may want to, those ellipses, I may want to stretch them out a little bit. So one thing I could do is instead of having um, the one in front of the absolute value of x, I can make that number a little bit bigger. Let me show you what happens in that case. Instead of one, what if I go to 1.25? See, notice it's kind of stretched out a little bit. It still crosses the x and the y axes at plus or minus one. Uh, let's go to one, negative 1.5. Wow, I've kind of really stretched it out a little bit more. Maybe 1.75. Be a little bit careful. You don't want to go too big with that number. Uh, we're going to go from ellipses to hyperbolas, and you don't want to do that for Valentine's Day. Uh, one thing you might want to do now is you might want to color it in. And the easiest way to color in any shape is to, instead of making the function equal to one value, you simply want to use an inequality. So I'm going to use the same function now, except I'm going to set it less than uh, equal to 2. And there's the last one. I have just a beautiful heart. All right. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this message, uh, this video, and you've learned something about math. And hopefully you can use one of these messages tomorrow. Thanks for watching.